Hi, welcome to Happy Now Olivia, a channel dedicated to the pursuit of happiness. Because you don't have to wait, you can be happy now. I'm Olivia. Today I'm going to talk about healing springs. People have used geothermal and mineral waters for bathing and improving their health for thousands of years. Balneotherapy, the practice of using natural mineral spring water for the prevention and cure of disease can be traced back about 5,000 years to the Bronze Age. Though there is evidence human beings have been using hot springs for over 600,000 years. Nathaniel Altman has written a fantastically informative book called Healing Springs, The Ultimate Guide to Taking the Waters, which I'm using to make this video. Taking the waters was a popular term used in the 19th century for visiting healing springs. Many of the popular hot springs resorts were modeled after famous European spas, attracting their own kind of royalty, including presidents, writers, musicians, and artists. Taking the waters began to decline in America as people favored urban entertainment, theme parks, and glitzy resorts. However, today's interest in natural lifestyles, fitness, and alternative healing has brought about renewed interest in healing springs. I only recently discovered the wonderful benefits of healing springs. Though I remember being 12 and living in Bucharest, Romania, and taking a school field trip to a famous mud bath by the Dead Sea. Then in the last few years, I had the opportunity to visit a popular hot spring in Alaska. But I was not aware there were so many benefits to it. Then once, after a long, sleepless travel day, I was about to get sick. I could feel it in my throat, which for me usually means it's too late. But after taking my natural remedies and visiting the springs, I didn't get sick. That's when I realized there was more to it than just sitting in wonderfully hot water surrounded by mountains and snow. I went in search of answers and found Almond's book. And of course, I haven't been disappointed. Not only do I understand why natural springs are so special, but I'm on a mission to visit as many as I can in the United States and the world. Because of government regulations in the United States, most people think of health resorts and spas in terms of their calming effects and relaxation value. But in Europe and Japan, balneotherapy is an accepted form of mainstream medicine where there's an abundance of evidence that shows that in addition to relieving stress, certain mineral waters can help the body heal itself of a wide variety of diseases. Thirst is the body's way of telling us that we need to replenish lost fluids. In addition to drinking water in various liquids, we can eat water-rich fruits and vegetables. But we can also absorb small amounts of water by bathing in a warm bathtub or in a natural source, like a lake, river, or spring. Mineral springs are classified as springs containing minerals, gases, and vapors that can bring about specific therapeutic effects on the human body like increasing body temperature and the functioning of the glands, heart, circulatory, digestive, and immune systems, the muscles, and the skin. Taking the waters can vary tremendously. They can be enjoyed in an underdeveloped pool in the woods that can, that can only accommodate one person, or an Olympic-sized swimming pool in a luxury resort. The water can be piped into soaking pools, whirlpools, bathtubs, and drinking fountains. The water may be enjoyed naturally cold or hot, or artificially cooled or heated as necessary for swimming, showering, and bathing. In some spas, the water may be treated chemically to ensure purity, or the water may flow through the pool at such a rate that no additional treatment is required. The word spa can trace its origin to a mountain town of that name near Liege in southeastern Belgium. In the 14th century, an iron master used an iron-rich spring to cure his rheumatism. He founded a health resort at that spring and called it Espa, meaning fountain. Espa became so popular that the English word known as spa became the common designator for health resorts around the world. In addition to the curative waters, many health resorts have licensed health professionals on staff offering natural and complementary health treatments like acupuncture, massage, homeopathy, herbal wraps, mud baths, relaxation classes, fasting programs, and fitness training. Mineral waters can also be classified according to the predominant minerals they contain. In Europe, a two to three week course of spa therapy can be prescribed by a physician and paid for by Social Security. Because of budgetary constraints and the fast pace of modern life, many people visit hot springs and mineral springs for much shorter periods of time. With stays of several hours, to two or three days. Many spas are located in natural 
beautiful environments surrounded by gardens, forests, lakes, and hiking trails, offering a wide range of natural and recreational activities. My favorite aspect of mineral waters is the healing aspect. As I mentioned earlier, balneotherapy is an, is an approach to nature and healing that uses hot spring water, gases, mud, and heat for therapeutic elements. Over the past four centuries, the science of balneotherapy has evolved into a medical specialty in Europe and Japan, where courses in balneotherapy are offered to both physicians and nurses by major medical schools. Doctors believe that thermal springs can facilitate healing in a number of important ways, some of which are these. Bathing in hot springs can gradually raise body temperature, killing harmful germs and viruses. Thermal spring bathing can increase the hydrostatic pressure in the body, increasing blood circulation and cell oxygenation, helping to dissolve and eliminate toxins from the body. The flow of oxygen-rich blood throughout the body's increase, bringing improved nourishment to vital organs and tissues. It increases body metabolism, stimulating secretions of the intestinal tract and liver and aiding in digestion. Repeated hot springs bathing, especially for a period of two to three weeks, can help normalize the functions of the endocrine glands and the autonomic nervous system. There are three major ways natural waters can be used for healing. The first and most popular is bathing. Therapeutic bathing may include immersion in water up to neck level for approximately 15 to 20 minutes, two to three times a day. The, the time one can safely remain in a thermal pool varies according to temperature and our own physical condition. The second way mineral waters can be used for healing is drinking. The drinking cure is popular in Europe where many mineral waters are bottled for commercial use. After a visit with a spa physician, the patient goes to the source of the spring, usually a beautiful pavilion, and drink, drinks a prescribed amount of mineral water several times a day. Consuming water at the source is not the same as drinking commercially bottled water taken from that spring and processed at a bottling plant. Some minerals and gases tend to oxidize within hours of leaving the earth and may no longer contain the therapeutic effects for which they are known. Not all mineral springs are good for drinking. Some may contain arsenic, which has been shown to be very good for treating fungal infections of the skin, but can be poisonous when swallowed. The third way natural waters can be used for healing is inhalation. Inhaling mineral waters as water vapor has been effective in helping people with asthma, sinus problems, allergies, and other respiratory problems. Water therapies can help people regain their health, treat chronic disease, help with the rehabilitation of injuries and surgical procedures, and my personal favorite as preventive medicine, building physical strength and general immunity. The, the world is blessed with tens of thousands of hot springs and mineral springs. The United States has over 115 major geothermal spas and many smaller ones, and over 1,800 bathing mineral springs. Other countries rich in mineral springs and hot springs include Russia with 3,500 spas, Japan with 1,500 spas and an estimated annual attendance of 100 million people. The Czech Republic and Slovakia with 52 spas and over 1,900 mineral springs. Although nearly every spring is unique in temperature and mineral composition, there are two basic types, filtration springs and primary springs. Filtration springs are common in the northeastern United States, France, Germany, Great Britain, Eastern Europe, and Korea. They originate at higher elevations and are nourished by natural rainfall, which percolates under pressure deep into the earth through, through fractures in rock formations, such as granite and iron. The water is heated at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit for every kilometer beneath the earth. Then, then gradually, the water travels back to the surface along fault lines and rock formations, a process that can take thousands of years. Primary springs occur mostly in the western United States, 
Canada, Taiwan, Japan, New, Ze New Zealand, and Italy. They can be directly related with volcanic activity and contain minerals and substances that are produced by volcanoes. And like filtration springs, primary springs, the source of water for primary springs is many miles beneath the earth, making the water hotter and the flow more constant and reliable. Another type of water is juvenile water, which has been trapped beneath the earth and never before reached the surface. Found in both filtration and primary springs, it is often the remains of a vast underground sea. Juvenile water can be tens of millions of years old, stored in aquifers at different depths beneath the earth before they finally flow towards the surface. Before I go over some of the substances and minerals in springs that can have therapeutic and healing effects, I'm going to go over a little bit of the wonderful history of natural springs. Traces of Homo erectus dating back 600,000 years have been found in the vicinity of hot springs. The early Greeks favored bathing in both private and public baths. Homer and Hippocrates stressed the importance of bathing and drinking water for health. The early Romans were tremendously fond of bathing for health and pleasure. Roman baths, often, often large and luxurious establishments, were centers of entertainment, gymnastics, debating, and art. Early Japanese medicinal springs were considered to be the abode of spiritual beings known as kami. Native Americans have always considered mineral springs to be sacred healing grounds. With the fall of the Roman Empire, interest in bathing, especially communal bathing, declined. But by the Middle Ages, bathing in medicinal springs made a comeback. By the 17th century, physicians in China and Japan began to evaluate and classify many medicinal springs and spas could be found in much of the European continent. During the 19th and early 20th century, many books on medical balneology were published. During World War I, spas were often centers of rehabilitation and convalescence for wounded servicemen. Today, European physicians routinely refer their patients for specialized spa treatments, which are often covered by national and private health insurance. European spas, many of which are affiliated with national universities and medical schools, are staffed with trained health specialists under the careful supervision of the respective ministries of health. In the United States and Canada, interest in springs developed soon after the European colonists arrived in what are now Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. Both George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were fascinated with mineral springs. By the 19th century, doctors understood the therapeutic value of a natural envir environment, and adjunct therapies were part of the bathing experience, including diet, relaxation, and exercise. By, but by the middle of the 19th century, American spas had begun their decline. Fashion shifted as vacationers moved to the more the newly established seaside resorts. The growth of modern medicine, or scientific medicine, made balneotherapy seem old-fashioned. Modern medications held out the promise for rapid cures of chronic diseases. In addition, unscrupulous charlatans made all kinds of unsubstantiated claims about hot springs that gradually the medical community and the American and British public lost interest in the curative value of spa therapy. While taking the waters remained popular in much of Europe and Japan, by the middle of the 20th century, many of the most important American spas closed. Today, as more and more people pursue natural lifestyles and choose natural forms of health care, the popularity of hot springs and mineral springs for the prevention and cure of disease is increasing. So let's take a look at what's in the water and how it may be benefit our health. One of the substances that can be in mineral waters is bicarbonate. Many of these waters have carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen, and are often bubbly. Bicarbonate is a natural component of blood, and it's essential for proper digestion, metabolism, and overall functioning. Another substance that can be in mineral springs is sulfur. Sulfur-rich springs abound 
wherever there is volcanic activity. They are easily identified by the strong aroma of the hydrogen sulfide gas emanating from the waters. The gas itself is strongly antibacterial, stimulating the mucous, mucous membranes and helping to relieve problems of the sinus and respiratory passages. People have long used sulfurous springs to cure a wide variety of health issues, including liver, digestive and urinary tract disorders, chronic metallic poisoning, skin diseases and venereal diseases like syphilis. Waters rich in chlorides are found throughout the world, popularly known as salt, wa as, as salt waters or muriated waters. They have a high salt content, often derived, derived from subterranean deposits of salt rock and sandstone, which contain sodium chloride. Sodium is an important component of blood, tears, and perspiration. Chloride helps balance fluids in the body, helps regulate fluids in the body, facilitates in the absorption and digestion of nutrients, and helps transmit nerve impulses to and from the brain. The use of thermal mud as for medicinal purposes is called pellotherapy. Mud may naturally contain minerals or decomposed vegetable matter, which contains minerals and other therapeutic substances. The use of mud as a firming mask can be, can be, has been documented since ancient times. Mud helps remove toxins from the body, it helps maintain heat in various parts of the body, and it aids in the absorption of nutrients and minerals and other substances by the skin. Many mineral springs and hot springs around the world do not contain strong concentrations of minerals and are classified as lightly mineralized. When heated, these waters are popular for their sedative and thermal properties, which help relieve stress. These waters are also popular for drinking and may be bottled and sold commercially. A mineral that can be present in springs is iron. Iron, our blood depends on iron for the formation of red blood cells, which is essential for our immune systems to function. Another mineral, another essential mineral found in springs is calcium, which helps blood clot, builds bones and muscles, it builds bones and teeth, helps regulate the, the permeability of cell membranes, plays an important role in normal liver, liver function, and helps our muscles contract and our ha hearts to beat. Magnesium is an important part of over 300 enzymes used for body functions, including energy and protein production and the proper functioning of nerves and muscles, including the heart. Potassium plays an important role in many body functions, helping to transmit nerve impulses, balancing fluid and mineral content, and maintaining normal blood pressure. Now that you know some of the substances and minerals that are in springs that can be therapeutic and healing, I want to mention nutrition. Most books dealing with natural healing modalities tend to gloss over nutrition, but of course, nutrition is a key pillar to being happy now and essential for our health and well-being. If you want to know more about that, you can watch my nutrition video. The minerals and substances found in mineral springs come from the Earth's core, which usually end up in our soil and help produce nutritious food. Unfortunately today, most of our soils are extremely depleted and not replenished in natural or sustainable ways, so that most of the natural food we eat lacks vital nutrients, unless you go out of your way to buy organic and biodynamic food farming products. And even then, you have to be healthy enough to absorb the nutrients from that food. If you want to know more about that, you can watch my GAPS video. Mineral springs are beneficial in so many ways because we are exposed to toxic substances on a daily basis and we don't often get enough nutrients from our food. And if you're consuming mostly processed and denatured food products, then your diet is severely depleted of nutrients. Although bathing in hot springs and drinking mineral water 
should never be a substitute for a nutrient-dense diet. It can be a simple and comfortable way of allowing the body to absorb a small amount of minerals and substances that are essential for good nutrition and health. And if you're like me, interested in preventive medicine, it can be healing springs can be a wonderful and relaxing way to boost your immunity and your health. But what if you're already suffering from a disease and looking for natural ways to heal? Springs can be part of a natural healing protocol to allow your body to heal itself. I'm going to briefly talk about some of the specific types of diseases treated with springs. If you want to know more about everything I've talked about, I highly recommend Almond's book. As always, I'll link below the video anything I recommend and additional information. Skin diseases like dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, as well as burns can be treated with springs. Our skin is made up of 15 to 40 percent water. Dryness is often a factor in chronic skin disease and is related to aging, lack of sufficient drinking water, excessive perspiration, and living in low humidity environments. Immersion in water can have a positive chemical, physical, and mechanical effect on chronic skin diseases. Different types of spa therapy therapies are used for treat to treat a wide variety of joint and muscle diseases, like inflammatory joint, connective tissue, and degenerative joint diseases, and rheumatism. Thermal and spring waters, especially the drinking cure, are often indicated for treating a wide range of gastrointestinal disorders, including problems with the stomach and duodenum, gastroenteritis, ulcers, and constipation. The use of mineral waters to treat liver, kidney, and urinary tract disorders is among the oldest forms of spa therapy. Among heart and circulatory diseases that respond to balneotherapy are circulatory arterial, venous congestive disorders, hypertension, myocardial insufficiency, and cardiac arrhythmia. Since pre-Roman times, women have been soaking in hot springs and mineral springs to help gynecological problems. Although medications, hormone therapy, and surgery are often used today for treating gynecological complaints. The hot, spring, hot springs bathing is still popular in Europe for women who prefer natural therapies with a minimum of adverse side effects. Mineral waters have also been used to treat glandular and metabolic disorders like, like diabetes, obesity, gout, and prostatitis. Healing waters have been very effective in treating respiratory problems like sinusitis, laryngitis, chronic bronchitis, and asthma. And finally, mineral waters can help relieve symptoms of migraines, depression, and nervous system disorders. Nathaniel Altman has written a great book, well-researched and practical. His book has a list of the most popular hospitals around the world classified by mineral content. He also has a section of the most popular mineral waters, what's in them, what, where, what spring they come from, and how they're processed, as well as a list of the most popular and prominent hot springs and mineral springs around the world. His book is a wealth of knowledge as well as a great resource. However, there are many comprehensive guides of mineral springs around the world. When it comes to safety, mineral springs have stood the test of time for centuries. In Europe and Japan, where balneotherapy is an accept accepted form of mainstream medicine, springs have to maintain the same levels of water purity and general sanitation as they would, as one would find in a hospital. However, common sense should always be used, especially if you're elderly, you have a chronic disease or condition, open wounds, if you're pregnant or planning to take small children. And, of course, proper hydration is always a must. Although Americans enjoy the most advanced medical care in the world, with the finest physicians, the most sophisticated diagnostic equipment, the largest and most modern hospitals on earth, our health is declining overall exponentially. Degenerative diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity continue to affect a large portion of the population. The use of prescription and over-the-counter medications increases every year as, 
as well as their many adverse side effects. Billions of dollars are lost annually from missing work due to lower back pain, arthritis, and muscle aches alone. As I just said, as, as a result of their dissatisfaction with mainstream medicine, Americans are spending billions of dollars a year on natural therapies, such as acupuncture, herbal medicine, chiropractic, and homeopathy, which are often not covered by health insurance. I know, because while in the Air Force, during my entire healing journey with alternative therapies, except for chiropractic, I had to pay for out-of-pocket, and I still do. Americans are looking for safe, effective, inexpensive, and natural methods to allow their body's innate healing processes to function for the prevention and cure of disease. The United States is blessed with thousands of hot springs and mineral springs. It's up to us to use them for our benefit, our health and the health of our families. Someday, North American spas may be as popular as European and Japanese ones, providing health treatments as well as relaxation value. If you live in a country that values the healing power of nature in the form of mineral springs and hot springs that take advantage to the fullest, like Altman, I hope more people will appreciate the th their therapeutic and health promoting potential and use them not only for pleasure, relaxation, and personal reflection, but also for healing. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and consider subscribing so you can get the latest Happy Now Olivia video. In addition, I'd love to hear in the comments below how healing springs have affected your health and well-being. Remember, happiness is an active choice. You don't have to wait. You too can be happy now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.